Good afternoon, hello. I've had a lot of people contact me and ask me if, about guinea stones and lifting them and the position to be lifting them in. Not yet, I've watched a lot of guys starting out their journey towards lifting these stones. And I kind of thought it's time to maybe put a wee video together about setup. It's not going through all the weights and working up, that's the thing you have to do with your training program. But the very basics, how do you stand over these stones? How do you approach the rings? How do you hold them? What position do you stand in? I think it's important that we get the basics out there now. When I say we get the basics out, this is my opinion. This is what works for me. This is how I started uh, training for the thing. This is the, the technique that I've developed over now about four or five years into this journey. So what I want to do is just share my opinion with you. You can use it. You can choose to use another one. But I think I would feel better if I was able to share this with you and say, this is how it works for me and this is my opinion on what is a strong position in lifting the Denny stones. I can see things where guys, their shoulders are out, they're putting the weight in their lower back. I don't want to see that to happen to anybody if I can help it because if I see somebody hurting themselves and I haven't done this then I would feel guilty. So this is just me sharing my experience with you. You can take it or you can leave it. <laughs> okay so the very first thing that we want to do obviously is when you're uh, deciding how to lift the stones. There's a heavy stone, which this for the purposes of the, the session is going to be the heavy stone, uh, which is the big ring. This is the lighter stone. Okay, so we'll talk about the big stone and the wee stone. So this is the big stone, this is the wee stone. The big stone can go front right, if you're right handed. It can go front left, if you're left handed. It can go back right, it can go back left, or we can move them in to a side to side position. You know, again with the heavy stone to the right, or the heavy stone to the left. So th this is completely your choice and it's something you should maybe experiment with. But I do think that for me, uh, being right handed, and being on the right side, to have the big stone on the front right, that's where I'm coming from. And that's that's where I'm going to focus the training on uh, for, for this particular session, okay? So, uh, starting position. One of the things, the first thing I see when I see guys doing this, and it's the first, the first time in the rings, I see the, the rings, the, the stones in a line. So you can see the rings just in a line, and guys are starting over in the middle, which, you know, you would think that makes sense. I suppose the best thing I can say at this stage is when you go to grab those, okay, you can see my hand is out in front of me, and this hand is well out behind me. Okay, and notice how much twist I have in my torso. If you were going to do a deadlift, would you start out here on a deadlift? Uh, the answer is no. <laughs> so obviously what you want to do with a, with a bar when you're deadlifting is get the, the bar as close to your shins and as close to your body so it traces a path up, up your legs, okay? Because you're never going to lift them out here. You're going to be weak. You're going to put too much pressure on your lower back and that's a very dangerous and weak position, I think. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, I'm just going to pick these up. I mean, we're, we're not worrying about position at the moment, okay? Uh, but just whatever they are, because the, the weight's light. And the reason I'm saying that is once I pick these up, watch that they're kind of in my middle at the minute. So that's what happens. They change position. When I'm stood up, they'll find their natural position. So if you set them straight down, then what they're doing is all of a sudden that linear position has changed to an offset position, okay? I think that's very important because my shoulders, compared to most of you guys who are going to be doing this, are quite narrow. Therefore, guys with wider shoulders are going to have different widths, uh, different widths for their rings. So there might even be a gap between your plates. They might be tight together the way I have it. But I think it's worth just whatever position they're in, when the weight's light, pick them up, stand up straight, and set them straight down. Okay. What that does, like I say, it, the stones should only ever rise straight up and, and go, go straight back down again. If you're having to pull a weight from over here, this is exaggerated, but if you're having to pull a weight from over here to here to up, eventually, because what's going to happen, no matter where it starts, you have to stand up with it, so it has to be under you. So if you're starting out here, out here, out here, anywhere that's not directly under you, you have all that effort to pull it here. Now, there's about 50, 50 kilos on that. It's not a heavy weight, so I can pull that from anywhere. But whenever there's closer to 200 kilos on that, you're not going to do it. You're not. In addition to that, if you're in a position here and your shoulders out over, which is what we're going to focus on later on, all of the weight is on your lower back. Your weight on the right side is on your toes, 
You're waiting on your left side's great. This is a really strong position on the left side, but out here is very, very weak, and that's where all the weight is. So, uh, once we have established that stand up from any position, we're nice and straight, the way you would be locked out on the deadlift, and you're setting it down. Okay, because whenever you straighten up, you're not going to straighten up in a, in a bent position or a twisted position. You're going to, going to get your shoulders square. So there, so that's that's where you want to be at this early stage. You want to be nice and square, like you would be in a deadlift. You know, head back, everything properly braced and straight down. And when you stand away from that, that is your starting position. So you come come back to that starting position every time. Okay, so now we've covered the position of the, the stones or the, or the rings, whatever we're going to call it. Uh, what I want to do now is, is get into the setup and how, how you set up these things and how you how you address the weight and what position you want your body to be in before you turn on the power. So remembering where we were when we stood up these and set them down again, we want to get back into that position again. Uh, so for me, the position that you want to start lifting in is going to be, if you imagine, a goalkeeper who's on his toes and ready to, to jump to the left or the right and all very athletic. We call that the athletic position. For us, we're going to adapt that slightly in that we're going to be nice and balanced and uh, our, our weight going down through our legs, but we're going to just go back a wee bit where the weight is actually on our heels so you can wiggle your toes whenever you're in this position. This is a very, very strong position. When you twist this way, put that shoulder out we talked about earlier on, this is a very weak position in that you're driving through your toes so your ankles come into the lift. We swing on back, get those shoulders as square as possible. That is a very, very strong lifting position. Okay, so what we're going to try and do is replicate that as much as possible whenever we're lifting, lifting the rings. So my starting position is always to be here. Okay, now the front ring is heavier, obviously, than the back ring. So to stand in the middle of them, it's going to imbalance the weight. In other words, all the weight's going to be out in front of you. So we stand slightly more over the heavier weight. And when I reach down, obviously I want to go, I want the rings to come to me. So I don't want to go reaching for rings. I want to just let my arms hang naturally by the side, whatever position my hands naturally fall. My hands don't naturally fall in this position. My hands hang this way. So with a slight twist of my shoulders, where this hand's in front and this hand's behind, if I dip down, I want the rings to be there to grab onto. If they're not there, I'm going to have to go looking for them. It's going to put me out of position. So. Starting with our weight on our heels, that nice athletic position. Stand up, just reach down. No leaning forward because you want your shoulders over your hips. We're going to reach down and those rings should be there, ready for me to grab them, which they are at the minute. That's a really nice position for me. There it is. Okay. So then, once we are going to turn on the power, we're going to take all the tension out of the rings because you wouldn't yank on a deadlift, so you don't yank on the seater. So you're going back onto your heels, you're driving those hips onto your shoulders. You're picking a stud spot straight in the air, driving straight up, okay, and down. Now, again, whenever we do this, we're trying to replicate normal weight lifting. We're trying to make this as much like normal weight. All the stuff that you already know about, trying to bring this into the Denny Stone lift, okay? So, everything nice and close to you, okay? So, my, my forearm at address here, I can feel my forearm touching my thigh, particularly when I drive my hips forward, I can feel a nice connection here, which is good. I don't want to be disconnected. What that does, keeps me connected to the weight, but it also keeps the shoulder nice and braced. So the weight just comes up. So it's my legs and not my lower back that's pulling the weight. Again, whenever we reach for the back weight, it puts my shoulders in a slightly tilted position. But again, I can feel my forearm touching my, the back of my leg here, my hamstrings. I can feel the front one touching my thigh, pushing straight up and down. That's very important. All of those things in setup are so important. I take time on, on, on emails to try and explain this to people. <laughs> so I just thought this is a better way to practically demonstrate it. Once you get that technique and all of this becomes second nature and you're in that nice strong position, which is a strong position in my opinion, uh, then I think you can start putting the weight up. If you go in 500 pounds, 600 pounds out of position, you're running the risk of really hurting your back on the lower right side here. This is for all, the minute that this that this shoulder comes out, I think you're in trouble. So in other words, if you're here and you start to pull and that's really heavy, what it does, it corkscrews you, I call it corkscrews. When you start to stand up, your legs straighten, but you, you kind of, your body corkscrews back into the ground again. So it's imperative, this shoulder, and this is the pivot point. This is for me, 
this is the one area of failure that if you get this wrong, then the last thing you're going to fail, you know, some guys have got really strong backs. My father lifted in this position, you know, which doesn't suit me at all. But I mean, maximizing your strength with this shoulder back here in this position. Now, I am in the, the strongest position I think I can be, but I'm taking out all of my lower back with my hips forward. There's a nice linear thing with my hips and my shoulders, and everything's about up. You know, they talk about push and pull, you know, where a deadlift's a pull. I actually think it's a push because once I get into this nice strong position and I've taken all the tension out of the rings and I'm going to drive, I can feel my weight squaring both heels here, I'm pushing them through the ground. That's what I'm imagining. I'm picking a spot in the sky, I'm pushing through the ground, but everything's moving up towards that spot in the sky. You know, this is an exaggerated position. When you get better at it and everything's coming naturally, you don't need to look up as much. But I think that just promotes that feeling of everything straight up in the air. Okay, that's the basics as I see them. So what I want to do now, I just want to now, with your final recap, obviously we have the, 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 the stacks in the position that we talked about. We pick them up nice and light, stand up straight and set them straight down. So where I want to get back into position, where everything's sitting there waiting for me, I just want to stand straight up. I don't want to drag any of the plates across the ground in any way. There should be no lateral movement, no front to back, no side to side. It's all about just up, okay? So I'm going to set up again. I'm going to get my feet in a nice position. Now I can feel contact here with this. And even if it gets a bit wider, that's okay. Just move everything, you know, where it's, where it's kind of nice and balanced. You feel nice and balanced. The important thing is once you get your weight under your heels, don't lose that. Don't let this, don't, don't, don't let the twist Put your weights, put your weight under your toes. Before you're about to pull, if you can wiggle your toes and both feet, when you take the tension out of the rings, if you can wiggle your toes before you before you turn, turn on the power, you're in a good position. If you feel that your toes are locked to the ground, particularly on the right side, I don't think it's gonna to happen to you on the left side if you're right-handed, obviously reverse everything if you're a left-handed lifter. But on this side, if you feel your toes nailed to the ground, you need to pull that right shoulder back, because what's the reason that that's happening is this right shoulder we talked about is coming forward, therefore the weight is not in your heels, you need to get that back. Okay, we are in a position where there's a twist in our torso, what we want to do, we want to minimise that twist, so essentially as straight as you can get your shoulders and you're, you're just a slight, slight twist for the, from side to side, just slightly, that's all you need to do, because you can bring the rings and trust me, whenever you get to stand over the actual Denny stones, you can put yourself in this position, they will allow that because of the way the stones are the shape of them, they'll allow you to get in exactly that position, or very, very close to it. And again, if your shoulders are wider than mine, it makes it easy because you have that extra width to play with. You know, the stones can go quite narrow with the rings, which suits me fine, but they can also go wider, because if, if your shoulders are wide, this is going to be your starting point, it's going up, up and down, you know, obviously allowing for wider shoulders. Therefore, you would push the stones out a wee bit further, you would push your training rings out. But you'll discover that in, in that first time you pick them up and set them down, there could be a gap of these, it doesn't matter. So we're going to get our heels planted, okay? Now, with this being the, the heavier ring, I've done a grip video, so I'm not going to spend any time on that now. You can go and watch the, the, the grip video. Whether you want to grip them, natural grip, or you want to stick your thumb in, it's up to yourself. But no matter how you grip the stones and the rings, this is where all the action's happening, okay? This is the final tip I'm going to give you, is make sure and get this grip set. This is the one that you really need to spend time on. And if you need to take three minutes or four minutes to get this set, take the time. Do not rush it, particularly when you get there on the day. It's okay in training, you can work things out for yourself. But when you arrive at the Denny Stones, this is your chance. This is your, this is your opportunity. You want to remember your first tussle with these stones and you want to be a good one. So don't forget to set your grip. I can't stress that enough. Okay, get your grip where it's your most powerful grip that you have, okay? And that might mean twist and do whatever you want to do. All those wee tricks that I taught you in my video, or whatever tricks that you picked up yourself, whatever techniques, not tricks, whatever techniques you picked up yourself, use those and make sure you get this set because this is where all the action is. You know, the little one, whenever you go to pull and in training, try and forget about the little one as much as possible. Once you get that nice setup position, you're used to that. When you go to turn it apart, just think about pulling the big ring. That's the only thing that should be in your mind at that stage. You know, we go through this thing that golfers call a pre-shot routine. 
we call it a pre-lift routine. Okay, so for me the pre-lift routine is right foot, left foot. Everything's nice on the heels, okay? Next, most important, get this grip set, okay? Once that's set and you're, you're happy with that, I would sort of move my foot just, just to allow me to get a hold of the ring. So that one's nice and comfortable too. So then I go back to that nice strong position, okay? I turn on the power, okay, take all the tension and just think about pulling the big stove. Yeah. Okay, now, when you do this in training, when it's light, when you take the tension out and you turn the power as fast as you can, rip it off the ground because when you're going up through the weights, you have to have that feeling of ripping that stone off the ground. All this kind of slow labour thing is going to, it's going to affect you when the, when the plates start getting really heavy. So really get that, take the tension boom, as quick as you can. Exactly the same as you would do in a deadlift. Any other weightlifting thing, when you're benching, they want you to explode off the weight. <coughs> do it in this as well. Very best of luck to you. If you have any questions, I was going to say phone me, but <laughs> you don't have a number. Message me. I'm on Facebook. Uh, if you get me through this, I'll probably go on YouTube. Message me through YouTube, whatever. But the best of luck. Thank you. Hi. Thanks very much for watching the video. I really hope you got something out of it. Uh, I'm going to tag a little video on to the end. Uh, the video was taken a few weeks ago in Kansas at the IAWA World Championships where they introduced a new lift this year and the lift is called the Shanks Lift named after my father. Uh, the Shanks Lift is basically using the training rings and you must load the back stack to 75% of, of, of the front one. Uh, the rings must be similar in height and, and shape etc to, to the Denny rings to replicate that, that lift as much as possible. Uh, so this is a 330 kilos and the reason I'm showing it is I want you to see all of the different steps that we talked about in the setup right through to the actual lift itself when there's a bit of weight on it where it actually matters. There's 189 kilos in the front and 141 in the back. So I hope you can see everything that we talked about being put into practice. Very best of luck on your journey and I wish you a Merry Christmas and all the best. Not a bad man, but I put money on it for way to go. I think it's going to be there. Come on, Come on. Come on. Yeah, let's go. Come on. Come on, Steve. Come on. Come on. Yes. Come on. Come on, Stevie. Bounce! Yeah!